If you're listening to this video, it's likely I'm not the only person on YouTube whose work you engage with. It's very likely my videos aren't even the only medium or genre of creations you enjoy, and in addition to videos, you might appreciate one or all of the following. Cool screenshots, beautiful artwork, podcasts, opinion articles, gameplay guides, lore theories, and fanfiction. This kind of creativity happens more often and at higher quality when a game makes that creative work's existence a consideration, even a small one, and some games really don't. Note that all of this applies more so to longer games than shorter ones, obviously. As an example, very few people will complain that Resident Evil 2 Remake lacks a way to revisit its cool moments. While it's a 10 hour playthrough your first go around, the game lasts around 2 hours on its hardest difficulty once you put in the work to become a master, so it's pretty speedy to reach the moments in the story you want to revisit. So again, mostly relevant to longer games, which is itself relevant because it seems like many games are getting longer in general nowadays. With that caveat out of the way, let's begin. Replayable content is important for a variety of different players, particularly those who are more creatively inclined. Players who express themselves creatively are more common than ever today and will continue to become more common as the nature of the internet and social media encourages sharing of creative stuff. When your friends are online, it's fun to show them your memes, beautiful imagery, and funny or shocking moments. Virtual photographers, video makers, writers, and anyone else who may like to reference parts of a game for any reason benefit from being able to replay specific missions or areas, which should make immediate sense. The alternative is having to commit to wading through the quicksand of an 80 hour game just to get to the place and moment they had in mind. Even if they do, who's to say they won't already be burned out on the cool idea they had when they reached that point due to the exhaustion of the unwanted journey? Whether it's a huge part of your online presence or just something that you do for fun every once in a while, if you're the kind of player who enjoys expressing themselves creatively in and around their games, replayable, repeatable content benefits you a lot. There are smaller groups of players embedded under the surface of most gaming communities that are focused on mastery, expressing creativity through honed application of the game's systems, mechanics, and gameplay. They love the joy of play, the action-reaction, the fantasy expressed in motion through conflict provided by the game's design. These players benefit from replayable content as well, but so does everyone who finds what they create useful. Breaking down mechanics and systems becomes more available and doable if it's possible to replay specific content. I would even say this group of players suffers the most out of any other when individual missions, quests, or encounters aren't comfortably re-accessible, because whether in gaming or the rest of life, mastery entails repetition, and when you prevent that repetition, or make it difficult, well, you do the math. Even if you don't find it fun to seek mastery yourself or make your own tutorials, remember that if you've ever needed to use or just enjoyed using someone's guide or tutorial online, congratulations, replayability benefited you too. The person who made the guides that helped you out would have been able to make them more easily and at higher quality if the game they're covering offered them repeatability in its different areas. This isn't to say that it's impossible to create helpful content when the game's structure isn't cooperative toward that goal, obviously it is, but it is harder, slower, and more exhausting, which is something the creator of that content and you as its viewer would ideally prefer to avoid. Gameplay showcase or exhibition content is something that is directly improved by the presence of replayability. I'll use the Assassin's Creed series as an example. Dramatically more skiller or exhibition content for Assassin's Creed games pre-Origins is made on a weekly basis than for the games post-Origins, despite the fact that these new games are significantly more popular, have bigger player bases, and are more current. How does this make any sense? Well, for a variety of reasons, and there are actually quite a few of those, but I'll zoom in on just one exact reason right now. It's that the classic games have a lot of replayable, repeatable content that can be easily re-accessed. Most of these games have progress trackers that let you replay any memory whenever you want, and restart from the beginning of that memory as many times as you please when you're learning or testing various things. This immediately provides the player with a way to get to where they want in the game's sequence of moments pretty much right away, and take whatever screenshots, videos, or writer's notes they wish with ease. Assassin's Creed Origins, Odyssey, and Valhalla lack a mission replay feature in their main story. While the latter two have manual saving, it's barely helpful because they don't let the player maintain unlimited saves. Due to this lack, Players can't even set up their own replayability in an accessible manner unless they're on PC and are willing to keep folders of saves they can paste in and out. If you don't, you better have perfect foresight and make sure to only keep the saves you'll want to return to the most. 
If there are more moments like those than the game lets you keep saves for, with 10 hours between one of your favorite parts and another, well, tough luck. I think you can imagine what this does to a player's willingness to repeatedly experiment with, break down, learn, or impressively showcase a particular part of the game even if they would otherwise want to and think it's a cool section. Once again, this applies to virtual photographers who are looking for a specific shot, guide makers who want to research or cover a particular part of the game they can't access anymore, and anyone who wants to play and replay a moment they love just for the joy of the experience. Now that I've mentioned the joy of the experience, sharing that joy with others while being a satisfying instinct to indulge in can often be good for the game as well, which is yet another compelling reason to support replayability and repeatability. A game's visibility popular presence, and community engagement gets a notable boost from improved ease of reaccess to individual parts of it in at least one category, word of mouth as facilitated by social media. You will see fewer memes, written works, videos, artwork, and nowhere near as many striking screenshots from games that don't make content replayability and sharing a consideration. Bonus points if that game also promised features like an improved photo mode for example, which never actually ended up arriving but I'm not naming any names. The point is that we're in an era of content sharing, and games that are mindful of that typically boast a more engaged and enjoyable community experience, which is a win-win for everyone. One way to be mindful of it is tools like photo mode, user interface, or HUD options. But another way is manual saving, replayable missions, and other helpful ways to access important moments without an absurd time expenditure or needing to replay the entire game. Otherwise, even if someone has a great idea, they have to have thought of it in the moment they happen to be going through those specific moments. If that part of the game is already behind them, and they didn't have the foresight of a legendary oracle to tell them they might need saves in those places, in the worst case they'll have to replay the entire game from the start. Some people are willing to endure this for the sake of expressing a bit of creativity, and it's a good idea not to underestimate them, but many people aren't, especially now when games are getting longer, and will instead choose to abandon those creative ideas to focus on something less exhausting and more respectful of their time. One last reason replayability is so important that I'll briefly touch on before we close, is that it's much more convenient in most cases to weave in clever, thought-out reasons and opportunities to replay existing content than it is to push yourself to constantly create new content and I'm putting some heavy quotation marks around the word new here in a lot of cases. Much of the time, I prefer compelling ways to re-experience missions, areas, and bosses I already think are great, which are open and honest about them being the same basic things, but tweaked and remixed to provide a different experience, instead of a game's transparent attempt to fool me into thinking they're producing something completely new when it's obviously a copy-paste reskin. Because the series is on my mind these days, let's just say that many more players will willingly replay and deeply enjoy trying the same Predator challenge in the Batman Arkham games than players who genuinely have fun with new River Raids locations in Assassin's Creed Valhalla, most if not all of which do nothing to vary the experience of playing them. If you've played one, you've played them all. That means this type of content, while masquerading as new, is actually the negative shadow of what we just described. It's the opposite of strong, replayable experiences that reward you for returning to the same one and finding new ways to enjoy that one over and over again, making you excited to come back instead of sparking dread and apathy. Content replayability matters. I may be an outlier, but I've never, not once, wished that a finite game with a fixed narrative length was longer, to the point that it being too short ruined it for me if I already enjoyed it. On the other hand, I have wished games let me replay the parts I loved and wanted to do interesting things with many, many times. If I haven't gotten enough of a game, typically I'll wish for better replayability, good reasons and convenient ways to revisit that older content I like, like I'm encouraging with this video. This is something I'm naturally predisposed to as a content creator, who does really enjoy taking in the full extent of specific areas or sections, and this won't be applicable to everyone, sure, but I can tell you confidently that it is applicable to more people than you think. If you have friends who enjoy virtual photography or taking screenshots, enjoy making videos, drawing fan art, writing guides, theories, lore analysis, or fanfiction, just go ahead and ask them what they think of games that don't let them replay what they want, and whether it makes their hobby a little harder to enjoy. Thank you for listening, may fog shroud you, and may the night keep you safe.